And then finally, there's qualitative analysis. Usually, uh, and particularly in this school, mathematics is seen as being almost equivalent to quantitative methods because it focuses on biostat. Now, biomathematics and biostatistics are somewhat different. Biostatistics will help you to determine whether an observation is consistent with expectations, whereas biomathematics tells you what to expect. There are a lot of ways of doing biomathematics. The method that I preferred is the qualitative analysis uh, of the sort that I showed you in the credit to prey loop. What it does is allow you to look at a system and to say at a glance, if this system is stable, it's because these kinds of pathways are strong compared to those. On the other hand, if you get results that are always the opposite of what you expect, that's because there'll be a, a positive feedback loop tucked away uh, without overlapping the pathway that you're looking at. There, there are things like that, rules of investigation, rules of educating the intuition. If something zigzags in a certain way without uh, crossing the equilibrium line, it means that there's a delayed positive feedback around and so on. Now, in advocating qualitative analysis, I, uh, I'm not putting down simulation or statistics or other methods, but simply that's the aspect of, of investigation that's most underutilized, uh, underdeveloped and ignored, ignored. And I found that the qualitative mathematics is also very aesthetically pleasing. It's easy to understand once you play with it enough. And so one of the things you can do is exercises of your own. For instance, each of you might think during the course of a day, what are the positive feedbacks in your daily life? And what are the negative feedbacks? Negative feedbacks very often take the form of doing something and then there's a kind of kickback that uh, negates what you're doing. It's a partial offset to what looked like a bright idea. Like when the Canadian government decided that they could reduce traffic congestion by making highways have more lanes. Well, the effect of having more lanes on the highway was that it was easier to drive, so more people would drive, and you restored the previous existing congestion. Or uh, you wanted to reduce navigational accidents, collisions among, among oil tankers. Now, previously you'd have these collisions in the fog because the tankers couldn't see each other. And the answer to that was the fog horn. And so you'd have a warning. And uh, you could hear them at a certain distance. We started building these modern super tankers. And these super tankers uh, had double hulls. Uh, they were built stronger. They went faster. They had radar. The outcome of all of this is that collisions between tankers are less frequent and more disastrous. What people do is increase their velocity to the point uh, where you have the same danger level as before. So if you have cars uh, that have airbags and other, pr other protectors, that's an encouragement to say that we can walk away from a collision so we can go faster. So these are examples of negative feedback. In one of our students did a thesis around the uh, Mexican-American community in Chicago looking at the behavior of loops, where young migrants would get into trouble with the school. And if the school referred them to the police, uh, the police will then have them on the list to watch. And they'll start harassing them and picking them up and if they get a police record, it would also be making it difficult to get a job, so that the response of the system to the infraction was to set up for further infraction. That would be a positive feedback loop. Positive and negative here doesn't mean good or bad. It simply means that in a positive loop, the initial departure from equilibrium leads to those actions that increase the departure. A negative feedback loop is one in which an action that gives rise to things which offset that initial action. 
and therefore the initial effect so that if you're below equilibrium the negative feedback increases the value if it's above equilibrium the feedback reduces the value and so uh, so in the negative feedback the initial uh, intervention uh, acts opposite to the shift of equilibrium, but then afterwards it reverses back to equilibrium. For example, the highway. Yeah. Example. The initial, the initial variable is traffic congestion. Mm -hmm. The expansion was to offset it. It's a negative feedback. Uh, in this case, there was also a negative feedback acting on the negative feedback. Uh, that uh, we would have the the comfort of driving was a variable. It was uncomfortable initially. We did something to make it more comfortable, so that we increased the discomfort again. So there would be two. Yeah, there were two variables in that loop. Let's say the discomfort coming from congestion and the width of the highway. So it's a useful exercise to think about the nature of the interaction. You find that most interactions between people in a population in the course of daily movement tend to be supportive interactions. That there are uh, when somebody is in your way, so they move out of the way, reducing the discomfort. Most of the driving is in fact uh, rather rather courteous and mutually helpful. And it's really amazing how few accidents there are. What that does is allow people to make stupid mistakes and survive. And so I, I find after the fact that I've made driving mistakes, but fortunately the other drivers were on their toes. Like once my car went completely out of control on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, we're going along at about 80 miles an hour. And all the other drivers had the ability to go around us. My steering column failed, so my car was going around, spinning around on the highway with all of these cars whizzing by me. And they all reacted beautifully, reducing the danger. So accidents occur usually when there's a, uh, two, two stupid mistakes are made at the same time, or two, two failures of machinery. And this gives you a hint as to one of the ways in which a protective system works is redundancy having more than one object so that if one thing fails, the other one doesn't. So if you're doing surgery, there's a nurse standing over your shoulder. And you be able to say, hey, that's an intestine you're poking at. Uh, so there are both negative and positive feedbacks. And the things that fail are the ones that are intended to reduce a harmful effect that actually exacerbate it. This is true in the disciplining of children, in the uh, criminal justice system, and in a lot of other aspects of the existence.